Hello everyone! Welcome to my Let's Build series. Today we are on episode 37, and I'm sure based on the title and thumbnail you already know what we're working on, but behind me right here we have our large aquarium, and I would really like to finally get a start on this because this interior is supposed to be really epic, kind of like the exterior is starting to look, but it's honestly just sort of dingy and dark and it's time to brighten it up, is basically what I'm saying. <laughs> so we're gonna come in here and just start on this aquarium. I want to get a good surrounding in prismarine and then we'll probably do a sandy floor. And you have all given me so many suggestions over the last 37, 36 episodes. And uh, I'm really appreciative of that. I definitely went through and read them before I started on this episode. If you guys don't know, YouTube's comment function has a search bar. So if you comment on, say, episode 27, something about an aquarium, and I'm working on it on episode 37, then don't worry that I didn't see your comment because I can actually just type in the keyword aquarium into YouTube's search and all comments featuring the word aquarium just pop up. So that's something I use a lot of the time on YouTube and that's how I read a lot of my comments. It's, it's just a lot easier to organize them if I'm looking for suggestions on something specific. That's a super easy way to do it. Anyways, fun fact of the day. Uh, we're gonna start by clearing this out. I want to do a sandy bottom, but you'll see this is a very tall aquarium. So it's gonna be kind of boring if we just do a flat bottom. Now, some of the suggestions that I have really, really liked is one that was left on the last episode and a couple episodes that were really early on is to do a shipwreck on the bottom. And some of you suggested to make it really tropical, like with a tree. And I think we have lots of room to do both of those things. So we're gonna start down here on the bottom. First of all, I think we're gonna sink this down a little bit and get it surrounded in prismarine just to make it look like it's blended in a little bit more. By the way, don't worry about this ax that I have. This right here, 20 durability. I have one to replace it. This one's too expensive for me to repair right now and it's, it's not worth it. We have a whole XP farm and I have a mine for diamonds. So I'm really not worried about the ax. So don't worry, don't worry. I know some of you don't like it when my tools are about to break. Alright, that's already looking a lot better just with that border in. I think we may do another slab border around it, but we'll decide when we do the interior decorating around here what exactly we want to do. That's not super important right now. Right now, I would sort of like to build this up a little bit right in the center. So maybe like a little hill right here. And then on the side of that hill, we'll probably do a little shipwreck on this bottom part. I think that's sort of how I want to do it. Wow, we're gonna need sand. Yeah, okay, I'm glad I have some. I also am probably going to have to go get more sandstone because that's what I'm going to use in a lot of this aquarium because, well, sand falls and that's not convenient. I need something that's not going to fall and get in the way and come down here because it needs to float all the way up there. All right, now that the base layer of this terrain is in, it's time for the scariest and what will probably be the most difficult part. We need to fill this entire aquarium with water. Now, obviously we're going to use kelp for this. We're not going to try to get source blocks by hand, but even still, this is quite a daunting task. Uh, let's see if I have any buckets. All right, I found all of my buckets that I have made. This should be enough, I think. And uh, now I'm just going to zip all the way up to the top in our little elevator and start placing it in. I really hope this goes well. <laughs> this is already kind of cool though. Look at the view from in here. <laughs> this is so funny. I can't wait to see what it looks like filled with water. Alright, here's what our aquarium looks like filled with water. This is definitely a case of something having to get worse before it gets better because just got so much darker. Dude, I don't want you here. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Okay, so now I'm basically just gonna come in here, get the lovely conduit effect, and start filling it up with kelp. This should be a lovely process. I'll let you know when it's done. Okay, you've gotta admit this is pretty cool though. Look at the view our fish are gonna have. Ooh, and look at that. <gasps> Oh no. Okay, so <laughs> need to fix that. Good to know. Um, okay, well, 
think I, I, I'd rather work on the kelp, personally. All right, so here's where I'm at so far. I've got this entire aquarium filled with water and also filled with kelp. This was really challenging to do, I'm not gonna lie. It took a while, but I don't mind because today is actually a snow day. So if you hear any weird background noises while I'm recording right now, it's the wind. There's a really bad winter storm happening, so I'm gonna sit back, relax, and play some Minecraft. Um, I guess it's time to create a bunch of entities and get rid of all this kelp. Oh, this is gonna be so satisfying. <laughs> I have a feeling I should do it in pieces because this is gonna really lag. There's like two and a half inventories worth of kelp in this. Like it doesn't look much, but this is so incredibly tall. Like this is a lot of kelp. <laughs> oh, I kind of want to just break it all at once. Let's do it. Why not? What's the worst that can happen? I destroy my entire world? <gasps> oh, it's so laggy. Oh, look at it though. That is satisfying. Okay, I'm not gonna do it all. I'm seriously worried about crashing. All right, now that all of that pesky kelp has been taken care of, it's time to actually get to work building in here. I would like to start over in this corner where I'm gonna sort of build up this sort of mountainous area. Not really mountain, but this little kind of rock formation that's been kind of built up and then worn down by all of the waves and everything. Or at least that's what it'll look like, I hope. That's not too bad, you sort of get the point. I'm going for things that are a lot more vertical because we have so much vertical space and not a whole lot of horizontal space. So I want these pillars to be kind of reaching up. I'm gonna do the other one even taller. So we'll have one right here and one right here. And this one's gonna reach way up, probably a few blocks higher, even to right here. And then in the center, we'll do a shipwreck. And then up above that, I want to have like a floating island. And the floating island is what will have our tree on it. Our little coral tree. Yeah, I think that's a fantastic plan. I'm gonna go put it to action and go grab some more sandstone. All right, so I've taken a little break between this clip and the last and gone ahead and created some of these little sandstone structures. I sort of like the way that these are turning out and I think I'll work on the sort of floating one next. So I'm just gonna come to roughly the center. I think that's the center right there. And build this up to where I think I would like to start the floating island, which I think will start right here at the base. Cause I'd like it to sort of just taper up a little bit. That'll be sort of nice. I actually have some really exciting news that I'm living through right now. At the time of this recording, we have not yet hit 50,000 subscribers on this channel, but we're about to. I'm currently recording this on February 26th, which is a Tuesday, and we are currently nine subscribers away from 50,000, which is just so incredible. Thank you so much to everyone who has subscribed to this channel. I mean, that's such an insane number to me. I'm so proud. Ugh. Thank you so much. I'm so excited for the celebrations that we're going to have. So this is a little bit weird because you guys are in the future right now. I'm in the past, but basically on the day this goes live, I think if I get it done in time, I'm going to be making an announcement and how I am going to be celebrating hitting that 50,000 subscriber milestone. So if you would like to get involved in that, make sure you're in my discord server or watching my community post. But my Discord server is definitely the best way to be involved. So I'm going to be announcing everything there and how we are going to celebrate. And I'm super excited to do it. So definitely, definitely tag along if you can. Okay, let's sort of swim down and see what that's looking like. Hey, that's not bad actually. Let's drag that down one more. Yeah, I'm liking this shape very organic and we've definitely got lots of room up here to add even more stuff. I'm just gonna coat it in a layer of sand, I think. All right, the terrain in here is already turning out to be so beautiful. I'm gonna go ahead and start on the tree and shipwreck next. So let's just grab some supplies for that. Hmm, I have a lot of jungle wood. Jungle wood kind of does have that greenish tint. Maybe we'll go for it. Let's do it. We'll do jungle wood, and we'll do some green glazed terracotta, some green regular terracotta, and I think we may want to throw some coral in with that. Maybe, hmm, 
Maybe blues in with that or yellows? Yellow could be nice. Oh, I sh totally should have done the lime green glaze and that would mix in so well. <gasps> I can totally still do that. I'm gonna go make that change real fast. All right, the lime green terracotta is feeding into our little smelter right here. Yes, that's gonna be so much nicer. So that transitions sort of nicely actually. And maybe we should have left some of the lime out to make that full sort of transition. Yeah, I'm gonna do that. We'll leave, we'll just leave 60 now. I can make more. I have lots more lime dye and lots more terracotta. The other thing I really wanted to think about while I'm down here is a good way to get vines to sort of hang from this tree. And the more I'm thinking about it, the more I can't figure it out. The only thing I can figure that might be waterlogged is maybe glass panes, but I haven't actually tried that. I'm actually just gonna grab these four regular glass panes and see if they'll waterlog real fast. Let's just run out here and place one. Oh, they do! Okay, so that may actually work. All right, uh, come back, thank you. All right, so I'm gonna grab some uh, yellow or maybe lime green glass pans. Yeah, lime green probably would be best. And we'll use some of those. All right, here's what our aquarium looks like from the outside so far. Obviously, I mean, it's looking a little bit dull, but we have literally nothing in here yet. So let's get to work before we judge it too harshly. Let's start up here by marking in the base of my tree. And I'm going to mark out some simple roots. Maybe I'll hang some down over the side. Oh, maybe we could have some tucked down here as well. Like it's sort of coming out of the rocks a little bit. Like maybe right here and then right here. Oh, I definitely need an axe. I'm just trying to spread out these branches as much as I can because we don't have a ton of horizontal space. So it's a little bit of a challenge, but I think I'm getting a shape that I'm sort of okay with. It's definitely a lot of breaking and then placing again to get things correct. All right, I think I'm happy with the branches at this stage, so it's time for me to grab my leaf blocks. Uh, I think I may actually want some dirt here too because I have to spread these out properly. And this is where things get a little bit tricky. I think towards the top, I'm definitely going to be using lots of these darker blocks on the tops of these branches. I probably am going to have to go and grab some more different colors, but I only wanted to make what I needed at first, so I'm making it in smaller quantities, because honestly, I'm not gonna use very much of this green terracotta for anything else, and I need quite a bit of the plain terracotta, so there's no point in wasting it. Oh, I'm loving this process so much. I honestly love making trees in Minecraft. It's like my absolute favorite thing. That's just so rewarding to see something natural come to life. Hmm, now that's a weird, weird area of water right there. I must have ruined the source block by placing so many blocks. All right, let me maybe put that right there. Yes. Oh, I'm loving this. As we get further towards the bottom, I'm be adding in more of these corals. All right, so here's sort of what my tree looks like so far. I think I need to add a few more yet. I sort of want to add more of these dark colors though that I'm out of, so I may go and fetch some more of that. But I'm going to go over sort of some of these areas and add in some of these sea pickles, especially into these little corners where they won't be quite as noticeable just to really brighten up this tree a lot. Kind of give it that effect like it's glowing. All right, hopefully that will help. Now I'm going to head down and grab a few more coral, maybe fans, to decorate it a little bit. Probably in the color yellow. Yes, I have lots of them, so that is perfect. And we'll grab a few of those as well. Oh, this is my favorite part. Oh my goodness. And let's grab some seagrass as well, just to see what that looks like. Let's scatter this around to get these beautiful flower-like structures all along this tree. Oh my gosh, I love it. <gasps> We'll put a few of these wavy grass around as well to give some motion. Yes, perfect. Oh, I love it. Oh, coral makes me so happy. All right, now let me see what these vines are going to look like. 
just to have something sort of dragging downward a little bit. Not sure if I'm going to like it, but if I don't, I can always just remove it. I don't hate it so far. I mean, I've never liked using glass panes that much for vines. They definitely don't stand out as much as other alternatives, but underwater we don't have that many entities or items that we can use for this. So if you guys have any suggestions, definitely bring them up. But I think this is probably going to be a good alternative for now. All right, there it is. There is our underwater coral tree for the aquarium. That's pretty awesome so far. I'm going to head down below now and see what that looks like on the outside, and then we'll get started on the shipwreck. Oh, and we need to sleep. All right, so for the shipwreck, I've grabbed some of this spruce wood. We're going to kind of lay this down here. I'm hoping I'll be able to make it look like a shipwreck. <laughs> Honestly, I've never really had to build one of these before. I'm not sure entirely how. I'm gonna try to make it look really broken open, I guess. Like there's lots of wood laying around and we'll probably do a sail in the center. That'll probably help to give it away if I struggle. So we'll have that coming up and where's my dirt? Right there. We'll have it like tilt over and then tilt forward a little bit like so. That might be too high. No, that actually may have worked if we did it like this. Alright, so I haven't got a lot of room to work down here, and honestly, that is causing me to struggle. So this is basically like the back half of a ship, almost. So I've kind of curved it up back here a little bit with stairs. And I've added this leaning pillar here, and I just hope it looks something like a ship. Maybe, maybe. Oh boy. <laughs> It's kind of rough. Honestly, from out here through the glass, that sort of silhouette of a shipwreck doesn't look too bad. I think once we get this place a little bit more filled with life, it may look better, but definitely let me know if you have any suggestions in the comments on something that I can do more effectively in this amount of space. I'm definitely super happy with the tree, though. Okay, now I'm going to plant a few of these kelp around to grow and give us lots and lots of life around here. We'll do some on the ship itself and some just around the edges. That's probably enough. Now that that's in place, it's time to go crazy with our coral. So I'm just going to grab all of it here and head in and have some fun. This is where this place is really going to shine, I think. Dragging all of this coral in place. Oh, I love it. And we can mix up some different colors right here. Let me grab my dirt down on my bar. Let's mix in some magenta with that. Get some cool shapes going. I love, love, love placing coral. Let's do some of these right here, kind of on the side. Like they're growing into this. Yes, love it. Okay, and we'll do one of these sort of fanning up in this direction. All right, now that I'm fairly happy with where my coral blocks are placed, I don't want to cover things too much in the coral blocks because they can get a little bit overbearing. But now I'm going to go ahead and place in some of these gorgeous corals. Oh my gosh, I just love them. I mean, how could you not love these? They're gorgeous. I think we need to place a couple up here as well. I'm going to cover the bottom of this island in a couple little different corals just to get some more colors mixed in around here. We'll probably avoid doing the yellow down here though, just so we can save the yellow for the top. And then once that's done, I will save some of these corals for up here. Scatter around the base of this tree. And last but not least, time to grab the coral fans. These are sort of going to be the stars of the show, the filler plants. I'm going to spread these coral fans all around, focusing particularly on the sides of these structures. Really want to get everything a good covering so it looks very overgrown and tropical. Wow, we could definitely see that a lot brighter now. As we walk up next to it, it's definitely very evident that this is an aquarium. 
Yes! Oh my goodness! It's glorious! I love all of the colors in here. I can't wait to fill it with some fish. By the way, speaking of fish, we are going to be filling this with tropical fish. I know a lot of you have wanted me to place in some um, turtles or dolphins, but I think I'm going to avoid doing that just because I would honestly feel bad trapping a dolphin in here. Although I do think it would be nice to have an area for dolphins and a beach for turtles around our palace somewhere. Just maybe not trapped in this little aquarium. I'm gonna grab our buckets now and go get us some tropical fish. This is so exciting. We finally get to have fish in our aquarium. <gasps> Look at these, pink and blue. I'll take one of you. Who else do we have around here? Oh yes, you are beautiful. You can come to the aquarium. And we definitely need one of you. I'm trying to pick out lots of different fish. I'm not going to put any codfish in it for now, but I will say this is going to be an aquarium that's sort of filled over time because I would like to fill it with a lot of fish and I want to name each of the fish after you guys. So at the end of every episode for the next couple episodes, oh, let's not do a puffer fish yet. Yeah, at the end of every episode for the next couple episodes, I will add a couple new fish to our aquarium named after commenters. And we'll start with these five. I literally don't see a single fish. What, did I scare them away? It's a beautiful aquarium fish, please. All right, despite our fish finding problems, I did in the end manage to find five buckets of fish. Look at our aquarium. From out here, I think it looks even better. Oh my goodness. It fills up this space so well. I can't wait to see little fish swimming around in there. All right, the first residents of our aquarium are ready and I'm eating fish while I'm doing this. Oh, I'm so sorry it didn't happen, I swear. Okay, we have T-Rex Tom, the Black Tang, beautiful. Welcome to the aquarium. Then we have Joey, welcome to the aquarium. Another beautiful fish. They're all going to the bottom for some reason. I hope I didn't ruin the source blocks. That would be bad. Where did they go? Wait, shit, there's Joey. Oh no, Joey's swimming. Okay. Oh, and T-Rex Tom is swimming too. Okay, perfect. Then we have Sugar Rose. There you go, Sugar Rose. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful little fish. And Brian Blogs. And last but not least, Remy. Thank you everyone for commenting on the last episode. I literally just went into the comments on episode 36 and randomly picked a few names. Um, and I think this is perfect. Welcome to the aquarium. I hope you have a lovely stay here. We will so make this hole solid, by the way. I'm not sure if the fish, will the fish escape? Maybe I'll make it smaller. I had better make it smaller. <laughs> This has been wonderful. Thank you all for watching this episode. It's time for the commenter question of the day though, because I have a lot of preparations to do to get ready for our 50K celebration. All right, I was just scrolling through my comments and I remembered how many of you have been so helpful. <gasps> I see what is behind me. <laughs> you were about to ruin my comment of the day section. How rude. Goodness. I really need to solve the creeper problem, and that's what a lot of these comments were about, so thank you. I'm going to be reading a comment right now from Nathan Clark, and this comment says, The portal room looks fantastic. Thank you so much, Nathan. I do have a couple tips from a survival redstone perspective that you might find useful. Pistons are transparent, so they're a decent option for hiding light sources in some places. You're right about the pigment. If you can find a way to work it into the room, you could have a redstoneless gold farm and keep the pigment away. Place a turtle egg two blocks above a hole in the floor with an open trap door. They'll run right for the eggs and see the open door as a walkable path. Have them drop into a piece of magma with a hopper underneath to collect the drops. For the mob farm on your island, was that an embong design? Yes, it was an embong design. You could remove the storage below and have the drops feed into a dispenser. Yes, a redstone clock. Thank you so much, Nathan, for this. That could shoot into a bubble column and fall into a hopper inside one of the houses. Nathan, that is so helpful. Thank you for all of your redstone tips. I'm definitely going to be screenshotting and heading back to this comment for when I need it again in the future because I'm, 
100% sure I will, because we're definitely going to do a lot of those things, especially the mob drops over in our village. As for the pigmen, right now they aren't too much of a problem because, well, they're all the way up there. Let's actually head up and see how this looks from up in our portal room, because I think that's kind of important. Another thing that a lot of you mentioned that you would like to see is actually... Oh, I haven't removed this yet. Oh! <gasps> It's so pretty! <laughs> I love that! I think our tree has just the right amount of leaves that we can still sort of see down through. And that is wonderful. And see, not too many pigmen. So I'm not going to worry about it yet, but we definitely could do that. We could have a little hole right here, and it could fall right next to our aquarium. I mean, it would kind of ruin the look a little bit, but I think that's such a cool function that I'm almost tempted to do it. So thank you. Thank you for that suggestion. Another suggestion that I've had in my brain to bring up, and I think I've attempted to bring it up four times in this episode and got distracted every time, a beacon. A beacon running through the center of this tallest tower through the aquarium. I think that's a great idea, and I think even with the build that we have in here right now, we can still make it work. It would just have to come up through the center of the tree. I honestly, I don't think that would be too hard to work around. So I may actually consider doing that so we can get some beacon effects. Because we do have a beacon. It's just not set up. I was using it for mining and I took it down since then. So that's definitely something to consider. The other thing I want to consider that I saw in a comment. You guys are just, you're full of good comments. So I just had to have a second to bring some up. Over here in the last live stream. We actually brought down this wall, but if you'll see under here, we still have some water under the floor of our palace. And this right here, this is our aquarium. You know what this makes a fantastic place for? Secret room, secret entrance, secret entrance into our epic aquarium. I think that's something that we need to think about. Let me know if you like that idea, because I think that sounds super fun. We could have a secret door right here, and it just lead into the aquarium from the conduit ruin area. I kind of like that. Not gonna lie. <laughs> Let me know what you think, and if you have any more suggestions related to the palace, the aquarium, the secret entrance, the anything. Anything at all that we've done. I appreciate it all. Thank you so much for the support, and thank you so much for 50,000 subscribers! I haven't hit it yet at the time, let me tell you what the count is right now. It's really close, I'm really excited. <gasps> what is the count? It's loading, oh please internet, five! We're five subscribers away at the time of recording this. Oh, that's so exciting, thank you so much, and I will see you all in the next episode. Bye bye